In this learning unit, we will focus on compiling evidence to inform your analysis. Up to this point, you have primarily focused on making the case that your problem is worthy of governmental attention, identify policy goals for addressing the problem, identify what the current policy or policies are relative to your problem in your jurisdiction of interest, and identified some alternative courses of action to consider. Now it is time to dig into the evidence to enable you to compare and contrast your status quo with each of the alternatives that you have proposed. In the ideal world, scientific evidence would be used to inform all policies that are developed and to inform all policy decisions that are made. However, reality is often far from ideal. Sometimes the scientific process or research lags the policy making timeline, or a policy window opens, or perhaps due to a major focusing event, but there isn't sufficient scientific evidence to inform the best course of action or preferred policy solution. Alternatively, Sometimes stakeholders are so entrenched on the issue and one group holds sway over the key decision makers and as a result, they will provide the evidence that best supports their position. What would you prefer? A policy based on evidence or one based on a best guess? Think about that for a moment. Chances are you would ideally prefer an evidence-based policy. Unfortunately, as you may know and have experienced, many policies are often developed without sufficient or any evidence. They may be someone's good idea that took hold amongst decision makers and that they were able to garner enough votes to get it enacted. Sometimes policies are based on bad evidence or in today's lingo, misinformation. You need to be a critical thinker and reader when assessing evidence to ensure that you explore both sides of an issue. Recognize the values and positions of key stakeholders and realize that many policy options are value laden and supportive of the position of the stakeholder or decision maker who is putting it forward. So as you move forward with your projects, you'll want to consider the extent to which the policy options you're considering are in fact based on evidence or not. And likewise, you will want to consider whether the evidence to support their effectiveness is sound or not. As you will learn in the readings, sometimes scientific evidence is lacking and therefore you are forced to rely on qualitative or less precise forms of evidence. This is particularly the case when new problems emerge and policy and other interventions have not been implemented and or tested. Yet there is no perfect evidence, nor is there a perfect way to design or select a chosen course of action. Now that you have identified your goals and alternatives, it is time to gather the evidence to assess the status quo and the alternatives relative to your goals. This is all you will focus on over the next several weeks. I encourage you to spend time each week researching the evidence for each of your alternatives and goal combinations. As I will discuss in a moment, you want to be broad in your thinking about evidence. For this course, you'll primarily focus on documentary evidence, but in the real world, you may also conduct research to gather evidence to inform your analysis. All you can do as an analyst is to work hard to locate the best available evidence, given your time constraints, to inform the development of your policy options and the recommended course of action. Your evidence may come from, but is not going to be limited to, the scientific literature, popular press and anecdotes, evaluation and think tank reports, reports from interest groups and corporations, reports or evidence from jurisdictions that you model your alternatives after, and many other sources that you may come up with. I want to draw your attention to some of the resources that I posted on the Blackboard site that might help you with your evidence review. This page is under resources, tools for policy analysis. Here you can see that I've provided links to sources for systematic reviews, for example, that may come in handy in your evidence review. Although I do not expect you to do field research for this course, Bargark and Weimar and Vining both discuss approaches for conducting it. Field research provides the real world and qualitative insight to inform your analysis. One of the key goals that everyone was required to include is political feasibility. As I note on this slide and as you read in the readings, key to political feasibility is to first identify a wide range of relevant stakeholders, understanding what motivates them and what resources they bring to the conversation. While your first paper may have briefly stated that a goal is for the chosen alternative to be politically feasible, for your final paper, you'll want to define political feasibility more specifically and in detail, identifying specific stakeholders by name, 
organizations, and groups by name, and clearly explaining in your analysis for each alternative where key stakeholders stand on the issue. This table is excerpted from my textbook chapter. Here I illustrate how to assess various stakeholders relative to the status quo and each alternative. You would not include this table in your final paper. It might be an appendix, however. But a table like this will help you to synthesize information about each key stakeholder relative to each alternative, which ultimately will help you when you write up your analysis. You'll want to note that I have two columns in the beginning for the stakeholders. The first column lists who the stakeholders are. The second column identifies what resources they bring to the table. This is followed by a separate column for each alternative. You'll notice that each column has a brief um, name for the alternative. You'll want to do this when you do your final policy analysis as well in your side-by-side -side matrix. For each stakeholder, I list who it is, what resources they bring, and then in the cells for the analysis, I indicate what their relative positions are on the alternative and why. You'll note that in this example, I provide a corporate example, an advocacy group, and both party um, uh, legislative groups. You want to be fair and balanced in your analysis of the stakeholders. One of the key goals that you may have included either on its own or as an impact associated with another goal is some type of measure of cost to implement each alternative. One thing that often challenges students is where to find such information. If you're dealing with a federal issue, you should look at the congressional budget justification documents prepared by each executive branch agency. This will be particularly helpful for status quo policy implementation, as well as ideas and evidence for new program requests that you may be considering. I will show you where to locate congressional budget justifications on the next slide. You also can look at the executive's budget request for your jurisdiction. Recall at the federal level, this would be the president's budget proposal. At the state level, it would be the budget put forth by the governor. And at the local level, it would be the local executive's budget request. You can also look at funding from prior years, appropriations, budgets, and or existing program and policy budgets and expenditures. Also on Blackboard under resources, there's a section for federal policy sources. Within that, there's a section on congressional budget justifications. I encourage you to locate the congressional budget justification for your agency if you're focused on the federal level. You'll see on this page that I provide links to the Department of Health and Human Services justifications and operating plans for each agency. That's the first link. And then I provide links to sub-agencies such as CDC, NIH, SAMHSA, HRSA, and CMS. I also provide a link to USDA's page. If you're focusing on other topics at the federal level where another federal agency may have oversight, then you'll want to look at the congressional budget justification for that agency. You might find similar documents at the state level. These are basically budget requests prepared by the executive branch agency to submit to the legislative branch to espouse what their budget request is for the coming fiscal year. In addition to cost to implement or administer a program or policy, you may also be looking at cost effectiveness, the health impacts, revenue generation, etc. Also under Blackboard, under Resources, under Tools for Policy Analysis, I present links for a number of sources of the type of information that you may be considering beyond monetary costs. These might include cost effectiveness analyses, cost benefit, health impact assessments, and so on and so forth. It will be incumbent upon you to locate relevant information for your topic and jurisdiction, but these sources might provide you some good examples to look at. They're intended as a starting point, but not the end-all and be-all list of such sources. So now it's time for you to move ahead and start focusing on what many of you have wanted to do for weeks. That is, gathering the evidence needed to start making the case for your various alternatives. You want to be sure that you're systematic and objective about your process. Document all sources and citations. I encourage you to use a reference management program such as RefWorks. Be sure to keep detailed notes on all the evidence that you find and where you found it because you will need it for your reference list, not only for your final paper, but also for your presentation and briefing. I encourage you to reach out to Rosie Henneke if you need help with using reference uh, RefWorks, um, which is freely available to you through the library. Mendeley is another reference manager source. 
Under Blackboard, you'll know under resources, I have a whole section on citations and reference information. I strongly encourage you to make use of it because you will be compiling a lot of evidence that you'll need to keep track of. Good luck, and I look forward to working with you in the coming weeks.